advisory in effect from Monday evening through Tuesday afternoon. Tonight, southwest winds 25 to 30 knots with gusts to around 45 knots. Along the coast, seas 4 to 6 feet with occasional seas to 8 feet. In the Gulf Stream, seas 6 to 8 feet with occasional seas to 10 feet building to 8 to 10 feet with occasional seas to 13 feet after midnight. The tornado threat remains very high through Sunday night and what you're... This could be a very long night. So this is where we're anchored, just a little cut off the ICW. Our boat's like right there. And we have a stern anchor that way, and then a bow anchor out that way. So I would almost never recommend anchoring with a bow and a stern anchor. We can get away with it because we have mangroves on both sides of our boat. So if the wind's blowing this way or this way, it's blocked by the mangroves and we're not gonna build up a lot of chop or pressure against the side of the boat. And then when the wind blows this way or this way, we have the stern anchor there and then the bow anchor there to keep us into the wind. Now tonight the wind's gonna be blowing hard southwest. So that's kind of gonna be blocked by the mangroves. But the thing that worries us the most are the tornadoes, which they say can reach 90 miles per hour. So we're just gonna do some things to prep for those potential dangerous tornadoes. Then we have this little sailboat, that's our friend, and actually he already dragged today. I was helping him um, reset his anchor earlier today. Pretty much, see that little buoy right there? And he could be a potential hazard, so we just gotta make sure that if he starts dragging, we kind of, I don't know. What can we do if he starts dragging? I push him off. <laughs> Does anything else worry you? Lightning. <laughs> I broke the zipper. So we took the bimini down, we threw an anchor out to kind of prepare us a little bit for this windy, stormy, tornado-y night. Are you nervous, Sierra? No. This is one of the things that a lot of people who don't live on the boat don't realize. Like when we get like more significant than normal winds or storm potential, like our house is floating and we're held here by anchors. Really hope our anchor doesn't drag. That's our biggest fear and another boat dragging into us. So hopefully everything goes all right. The wind's picking up already. It was definitely like over 30 knots, gusting over 30 knots right now. Sarah's <laughs> on uh, Dogs of Instagram. <laughs> So coming to land this morning, there were definitely a bunch of power lines down. A few streets were completely shut down because of how many power lines were down from all the wind and rain and everything. We got woken up a little bit in the middle of the night because there was just lightning everywhere, just lighting up the sky and I could see through all the windows, kind of crazy. But uh, besides that, we held up, no one dragged, no damage, it's still a little windy out today. She looks so naked without her bimini. Jetty! Can you sit? Sit. Stay. Sit. Stay. Sit. Stay. Sit. Jetty. Sit. Stay. Stay. Good stay. Good stay. 
Come. Good girl. Still super windy out here. All right, so while we're on the topic of like anchoring and dragging and storms and stuff like that, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about anchoring. Now, my experience started with an old houseboat that my friends and I kind of restored, and we lived on that during the summer while we were lifeguarding over our, on the barrier island up in Long Island. My houseboat dragged a few times, and it was not fun, but I learned a lot about different ways to anchor in different situations. And from there I got on Tula, my small pocket cruiser sailboat. I traveled a lot more on her and I learned even more about different ways to anchor in different places in different situations. There's a lot of considerations when you're anchoring your boat, all right? The bottom can be different. It can be hard holding, soft, sand, mud, uh, debris on the bottom. On top of that, you have space limitations possibly or even the way that other boats are anchored will affect how you want to anchor. So we'll go over it real quick. All right, so this is our little boat, and this is the simplest way to anchor, just one anchor. This is what we use most of the time, especially when we're cruising. It's really easy to drop the anchor and then pick it back up, very simple and easy. And then we just swing on this anchor if the wind changes or the tide changes. This is especially good if you're gonna be on or around your boat most of the time. All right, so this is how we're anchored right now on Neverland. We have one stern anchor and one bow anchor, and that's gonna keep the boat in a relatively the same direction. Now, this is only good if you're in a tight little space and you have something blocking you on both sides of the boat. Like here in our case, we have the mangroves on this side and the mangroves on this side, so if we get a wind out our beam, it's not gonna push our hull too hard. I don't recommend this type of anchoring for most situations. All right, so this is my absolute favorite way to anchor, especially as a liveboard, and it's especially good when you have wind and current factoring into your anchoring. We came across a situation when we were in the Bahamas last year where we were anchored in a cut and a lot of current was going one way and in six hours that current would switch and go the other way and the wind was just staying constant. So our boat didn't want to ride directly into the wind all the time. The current had a lot to do uh, pushing against the small keel we have on the bottom of the boat and that's going to be even more of a factor on sailboats. So this is called the Bohemian Moor. So we have one anchor here and then 180 degrees from that, we have another anchor here. Now, both those anchor lines lead up to a swivel right here, and then we have a short piece of line to our bow cleat. Now, when that boat swings, it's on this anchor, and as it keeps swinging, now it's on both anchors, and then it switches this direction, now it's only on this anchor. And this is great because the anchors never have to reset when your boat swings with the wind or the current. They always stay in the relatively same position, maybe just angling a little bit here or here. Now the way to set this Bohemian Moor is to just drop your first anchor, way up current or up wind, whichever is pushing you more, and then you could fall way back, let a lot more line out on this first anchor than you think, like double the length of that line, and then drop your second anchor, and then you could winch yourself back in on that first anchor about halfway letting the second anchor line loose. Now you're about halfway in between both anchors, and then if you have a swivel, you can use it. If you're only anchoring temporarily, then you only even need a swivel. You just tie both lines up to the front chalk. The only thing you have to worry about there is if you anchor, anchor for more than a few days, these lines are gonna get really twisted and binded up on the bow of your boat. The only situation that I can think of that you have to be careful of this anchoring technique is when you're in an anchorage with a lot of other boats, if they're all on a single anchor, they're gonna swing a lot bigger diameter than you're gonna swing. With this Bohemian Moor, you don't swing nearly as big of a diameter. All right, there you have it, guys. Those are just a few ways you can anchor your boat. My favorite as a live board is that Bohemian Moor. Right now, we're not anchored that way because we're in a unique situation. Now, there's a lot of different variations on all those anchoring techniques like the Bahamian Moor you could have three anchors out in a triangle all leading up to one swivel um, 
or that bow and stern anchor. You could have two bow and two stern or any variation of that. So let me know what anchoring technique you guys use. I'm really curious. And if I forgot anything, definitely leave it in the comment below. Thanks for watching.